So these are the new Jurgle 2.4 GHz DSM2 compatible receivers. Um, they're sold by our two hobbies. From left to right is the four channel receiver with a single antenna. It's advertised with a range of 300 meters. Then the second one from left is the six channel receiver with double antenna, so that gives uh, antenna diversity. Advertised with a range of 400 meters. And the third one is almost the same as the second one. Um, if you look at them, even if you look at them in very close detail, um, there are only the tiniest differences on the board. Uh, it also has six channels and it's advertised with a range of 600 meters. Um, I don't know if these tiny differences can explain such a large differences difference in um, range, but I'll test them. And then a big one, it's coming with the satellite receiver. Uh, both the receiver as well as the satellite receiver have double antennas, so it should have uh, antenna diversity. Uh, it's built well, it's got nine channels. Uh, and we'll also test them. Um, some of these receivers uh, needed a second time for binding. Uh, didn't bind correctly the first time, but after the second binding, uh, things were okay. Anyway, I had to find out the um, pin, what the pins were for. As you can see, there's no markings on the uh, receiver in themselves. Um, I had to find out what the pins are for. The lower pins are the minus, the middle pins are the plus signal, uh, the plus and the top row is the signal. So put in the black wire on the bottom and then seen from above the first row of pins is for the bind plug or the battery afterwards and the other are the channels one to six in a row. For the big one there's no problem the big one got its marking. So first of all I'm doing the home test um, testing the range at home in range test mode with reduced power on the Spectrum DX8 transmitter and uh, doing this uh, at home uh, with a full few walls in between uh, from one room to another uh, results are comparable to a range test um, outdoors which I will do uh, in next weekend. If the results outdoor are different than uh, the results I obtained indoors I will report separately on that. So the Binding has been performed, the servo movement is smooth, as you can see, and I'll do the test and report about this. The data recording the, is done by the Transcend MP3 recorder. I'm recording the servo output signal on the receiver on the MP3 player and analyze that on the computer with my own written program. Now this is the result of the first test, the four channel receiver um, with a net advertised range of 300 meters. Uh, here I put in a continuous servo signal um, in range test mode with reduced uh, transmitting power and a small pulse, this, this, that's correct, uh, I didn't move the stick here. Then I moved the stick a few times to indicate the farthest point uh, with three walls in between. Uh, then I released the range test mode on the transmitter and came back to the test setup, which is ending here. Now here I was in the same room as the receiver and here I switched off the transmitter. Uh, I continued to put in the sinus form um, on the stick, but of course um, if the transmitter is off, uh, there's no signal to be received, so it's correct that the receiver didn't move anything, but my test method does not work on this receiver. Um, the receiver continues to transmit a valid signal to the servo, 
uh, although with no valid content, uh, which cannot be blamed to the receiver. So uh, apparently there's an accurate uh, clock within accurate timer within the receiver that continues to send the pulses in exactly the same rhythm. There's no deviation. Basically not a problem, uh, a good receiver, but my test method does not work here. Uh, so we'll have to rely on the um, on, on seeing the waveform um, if that's being transferred to the servo in the correct way. Here I switch on the receiver again and signal comes back uh, within a second. So this test result is good. I'll repeat the test uh, the weekend um, outside um, on, with the receiver being carried on the 35 megahertz uh, aerobatic plane and have someone else moving the stick continuously. Uh, if the results are good of that test, um, we'll report no further. If the results, if there's anything wrong with the range test, um, I'll add that to this video. Now, this was the four channel receiver, basically makes a good impression. Then the first six channel receiver with a 400 meter range. Um, there's one small anomaly, basically the test is good. This was the pattern I put in uh, until I switched off the range mode and came back in the full range, in the full, yeah, in the full range mode on the transmitter. Here I also switched off the transmitter. Here signals coming again after switching on the transmitter. So basically this is okay. Now here is a small anomaly that's on the rhythm detection. Uh, I'll show you on the next graph uh, what's happening. This is a picture of the signal as recorded by the MP3 player. This is the bass signal. This is the servo impulse, which is as the way it should be. Now here, this servo impulse is being distorted. Uh, I don't know why. It happened only once, um, so the servo will do, will not have a chance to do a lot um, if only one frame is going in the wrong direction. Next frame is correct again. After one, next, all other frames are correct again. It's an anomaly only registered on one impulse. Will have no consequences during flight. Then we'll have the six channel um, receiver with the advertised range, advertised range of 600 meters. Uh, this one costs two dollars more than the one with 400 uh, meter range. Uh, I cannot explain the difference with the differences in the hardware as the boards look, look almost exactly the same. Uh, you'll really have to use a loop to find the differences. Um, now this test was also a continuous sinus wave until here, uh, switching out the range test mode and coming back with full power. Uh, stopping the range test um, here, switching off the receiver, switching on the receiver again and signal comes back again. Uh, here is in this, during this test there were two anomalies recorded. I'll show them both. They're similar like the ones on the previous receiver. This is the first one. This is as the um, pulse from the receiver to the servo should look like. And this is the distorted one. Also here this will have no further consequences. That's the first one. And this is the second one. If that happens more often, um, it might confuse the servo, but if it's only one pulse lost, one frame lost, um, it will not be no noticeable during normal flight. Then we've got the nine channel receiver and the nine channel receiver performed flawlessly. I did this test with the receiver um, the, for the outside tests. I'll do a test with and a test without the receiver. So, so far the uh, receivers all make a good impression and if the outside tests give any results that deviate from these results as tested so far I'll continue at 
an addition to this movie. Thanks for listening. So I did the field test. Uh, I mounted the receiver piggyback on the Kitman aerobatic plane. This was the first test, the York Lefort channel, 300 meter range receiver. Um, as the receiver continues to transmit pulses to the servo in exactly the right um, order, uh, with the right timing, um, I needed to adjust that method. Uh, I asked a helper to put this signal on the stick, a sinus wave signal. This was the um, ascent to the highest point. At the highest points I asked him to mark the highest points to stop the movements and then to continue again until the landing. So as you see the servo signal um, has been or the signal has been transmitted correctly to the servo and this seems like a good solid receiver. I flew very high at this moment um, at the highest point. Um, this was certainly 300 meters distance. Uh, I made um, height, uh, I, I measured the height um, during other tests and in comparison I'm absolutely sure that the distance was at least 300 meters on the highest point. So this receiver seems to be okay. Then the second receiver, the six channel advertised with 400 meters range, uh, exactly the same procedure. Uh, signal during the climb looks good, then at the highest point a few seconds uh, of pause um, to indicate the highest point. Um, I guess this was between 3 and 400 meters, not the full 400, but then again on not a not too big plane uh, you can't go any further, it uh, doesn't make any sense. And then climb or the, the descent back and a few aerobatics at the end, that's why the flight down, coming down to earth is longer than the climb. And the third receiver, this does not look good. This is the six channel receiver advertised with a range of 600 meters. Um, here you can clearly see that the sinus wave is interrupted here and here again. Um, then there's the pulse at the highest point and then it takes quite a long time to um, pick up the sinus again. Here you can see some fragments of a sinus uh, then here the transmission is interrupted again. Here it's a sinus and here there's another distortion of the sinus waveform. So I don't know if this is just this one, um, this particular receiver that's not perform okay or if it is good luck that the others did. Um, so at least be very very careful and test your receiver in a similar way. You can also do this on the ground. Um, you don't need sophisticated equipment but be sure to test it before you put it in a real uh, airplane. Then the 9 channel receiver. This was the test with satellite receiver mounted, uh, a perfect result, a good transmission here, the highest points, point and um, going back down and doing some aerobatics, um, nothing extraordinary to be seen. Then the same test without the satellite receiver, exactly the same result, looks also good. Of course the 9 channel receiver as the other two 6 channels also do have antenna diversity so even without a satellite um, it's a good receiver. Of course these tests um, are only tests of one example of each type. Um, be sure to test yours before you put it into an airplane. Thanks for listening.